Hey everyone, it's Dylan. Uh, we're back again for another week here in the shop. We've got kind of an exciting week. I think you guys are really going to enjoy. We've been listening to a lot of your feedback and we've heard people say they want to see more of our door process. So that's going to be part of the focus this week. We're actually going to be using uh, our BSC CNC machine. So you're going to see how we cut a lot of the door components on there. You get to see how we assemble the frame and some of the handwork that's actually required to build those. Um, right in front of me here, I have our maple burl slabs that are for the Marriott. We thought we were going to pour them this week, but we're actually waiting on approval for color samples. So these will end up getting poured next week. But I hope you guys enjoy seeing the doors and you'll also get to see that burl table all put together. So we're out here in front of the CNC now with some of the door components that they've been machining up here. Um, this I believe is for the brick mold. So there's that big profile that we're able to take out in one cut on the CNC. Um, there's a few more components here. And then this, these are still some rough pieces. Uh, this all has to get milled yet. This is actually the door here. So these are a few rails in the doors. The styles are on the bottom of the cart, but all of this still has to get machined on the CNC and put together, uh, but let's head on down and we'll, we'll look at the jam and see how that's coming along. Oh, <laughs> one thing I should bring up as we're going by, this table here, you can see, um, kind of a cool table actually, but it's, it's not our table. We had a company here in Calgary that contacted us because it is cracked right down the middle. So someone else made this, uh, unfortunately it cracked. Uh, so likely that just means that the wood dried out on this. So we're going to be filling this up with epoxy, putting a bow tie in, refinishing the whole table, and it should actually look pretty awesome once we've done our work to it. So that'll that'll be probably next week we'll finish this one up. Here's the frame. Uh, they've got everything all assembled here so far. One thing that we do on our door frames that is a little bit different is we actually screw everything together. So we don't just rely on joinery to hold it and glue to hold everything together. We actually use screws, which, you know, a lot of purist woodworkers, maybe they, they would shake their head at that because it's not relying on traditional woodworking techniques. But using those screws, we use big four inch long screws, that makes this whole thing way stronger, way sturdier. And when we actually go to lift this into the, the rough opening of the house, we don't have anything that's flimsy, it's just a nice solid unit. So from here, we have to get a few things trimmed up, like just get this top bit taken off so that this frame will actually fit in. And the next step will be actually working on the doors and side lights and getting everything fit into the frame here. So what I've got here is the piece, the, the layered piece, well it was gonna be the layered piece, but now we're flood coating it. Um, you can see we've got all of these drips on this side. That is because we've actually already flood coated the other side. So if we head around here, this way. <laughs> we head around here, you can see we've got our layer of epoxy on here. There's still a few little dimples and imperfections, so we might end up doing one final coat on here just to smooth everything out. But all of those mica flakes that we've put in, they're completely encased, so you can't even feel them anymore. So there's no sharp points sticking on the bottom of this. 
Our edges are quite nice, but we'll probably still do one more little sand on them. And then today what I'm going to be doing is sanding off the drips and doing the first seal coat on the top so side. So right next to me here is our piece that we're flood coating with epoxy. I mentioned this in last week's video. Now we had hoped to get a little farther with this um, for this video, like we, we plan on getting the second coat finished, but we didn't quite get it done. So we've got the first coat done. And in the last clip, which actually unfortunately cut off, I didn't realize the camera cut off. Um, you saw me sanding away uh, all the drips on the side and just getting this thing completely ready for the epoxy coat to go on. So I sanded everything up to 180 grit just so that you're not going to see the scratches in the wood. It doesn't really matter how much you sand the epoxy because as soon as you put the, the, the flood coat on it, you're not going to see any of those scratches. But you do want to make sure you sand the wood to probably at least 180 so you don't see any of your sanding marks in there. Um, for the first coat, I actually used our art resin. So the reason I use the art resin is because it has a little bit higher viscosity and I find it's just, if you apply it properly, the art resin, I find it levels easier and it just gives a really nice even surface. Uh, this piece, as you guys can probably see, still does have some dips in it. So the next step here is I'll put on my 180 grit sandpaper again. I will sand everything smooth so that all these low spots or high spots are gone. Uh, and then for the final coat, we're actually going to use our high temp epoxy, which you probably will get to see next week. Uh, the reason I'm using the high temp instead of using another coat of the art is because our high temp is actually heat resistant up to 90 degrees Celsius. So this isn't going in a kitchen, but it is going to be a desktop. So even let's say if a hot coffee cup got put on here, it's not going to show any marks. So the high temp is just going to be the best choice for, for basically any usable surface you're making. applying the first coat of finish to this four foot by eight foot dining table. Uh, this is Bastone Walnut, again, probably my personal favorite species. This piece has this really cool kind of rotten inclusion here that made for a lot of nice figuring in the wood. It's got, we kind of call it a lake too, uh, when you have that. And then that's one coat. And then behind me, you guys are probably gonna wanna see this. This is the round burl table. Uh, it's got, I think, three or four coats on it now. And just for you guys, we're gonna set this on top of the base for this video just so you can see what it's gonna look like. We're just still waiting for the steel mounting plate to show up, but we can't wait any longer to see it set up. Right about there, guys. There we go, you five on one side and me on the other again. That's what happens every time. So we got the, uh, the top lifted on here. Um, these white pads that you see through the resin, those aren't always gonna be there. We've just got them to actually protect the base uh, from the bottom of the table so we don't scratch it. In the end, we're gonna put kind of a big steel plate that'll go on, uh, but it looks pretty sweet. We're very pleased with the way this thing turned out. The, the grain match looks awesome, and hopefully our client's happy too. I think this might be my best table yet. That's pretty shiny. I'm liking it. Um, this is... I think four coats, one of extra thin to start, and three Pollux. And uh, it's just a lot of buffing. Uh, I think the last coat I was buffing for probably hour, hour and a half. I know that seems like a really long time, but this is the result you get. So I'm pretty proud of it. Looks pretty good. So behind me here uh, is the door, that solid maple door from earlier in the week and the boys have actually got all the brick mold clamped on here. So this one is a little bit trickier to get the, uh, the brick mold on because there is a curve going across the top. So what they kind of struggled with here is you have to get the curve lining up perfectly with the frame, but then you also have to calculate the exact angle you need so that everything matches together. So a lot of trial and error, a lot of playing around, but definitely well worth it in the end. 
And another detail you can see actually right here is we're also screwing the frame or the brick mold together as well as we did on the jam, like on this end as well. You can see all of our screws going into the jam. That just makes everything much, much stronger. Um, so we'll get, we'll let these clamps sit. We'll take everything out. We'll get it all sanded up. Um, and then we have to fit our side lights and our door in here. So there's the frame all glued together right now. Uh, we're actually going to stand it up just to take the thumbnail and then we're probably going to lean the door in front of it too. Hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. A uh, little bit different, you know, having the door content in there. So let us know if you guys enjoyed seeing the door content because Brad actually just sold another door today. He got the deposit for it. So there's going to be more of them coming up in the shop. Uh, one question we get a lot about doors is why haven't we done one with resin yet? That's actually just because no one's ordered one yet. So, you know, if you guys really want to see one, we just need someone to order one of those doors. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, one other thing I wanted to include. Behind us here, these are some of our pieces of fan mail uh, and stickers. We have more stickers over there too that we've received from some of our fans and different woodworking companies. So if you guys want to send us some, we'll open them live here on YouTube on camera and we'll probably put them up on the wall in our poor room too. So thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next week.